You're listening to The Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. And I'm Carolyn Nelson. Uh, tonight we're going to get uh, further into the expose of the root of racial tension in this country and elsewhere in the world, how they keep us uh, divided and conquered and what it really stems from. And most of you who believe in this Aryan master race crap and uh, most of you who uh, call yourselves identity Christians, I don't care if you worship in that church. I don't care if you believe that. The only people I care about are people who are racist, who want to kill other people who don't look like them, or hurt other people who don't look like them, or get rid of them or something. Those people I will oppose forever. Uh, I will uh, protect your right to worship at whatever altar uh, you wish to worship at, as long as you wish to worship there forever. I don't care. That's your your business, and it's your right in this country. We believe in that right. That's the only way that it can be. Otherwise, you're going to have a state that has a state church, and uh, we're all going to have to conform to that. That's exactly what the New World Order is going to be. But you're all going to find out that you are the victims, victims of people who have a hidden agenda. And most of your preachers and uh, ministers who are teaching you this crap and feeding it to you are members of these secret societies, and they are promoting Zionism. Zionism. For behind Zionism is not Jewish. Folks, it's not the Jewish people. They're being used. They're going to be sorry that they're allowing themselves to be used. For behind the Zionist movement are the British Israelis. The people who believe that they are the master race, that they are the lost 13th tribe of Israel, that they are the people who are going to inherit the world and the rest of us are going to be their slaves. And if you don't believe that, you just listen. Don't go away. I'll be right back. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'll check your history, you'll find in the accounts left by the Romans <clears throat> as they sent their legions up into Europe to conquer the Celts, the Picts, the Gauls, and the Germanic tribes. They describe very clearly what they found there. And what they found, ladies and gentlemen, was nothing that even remotely could ever be misinterpreted as any remnant of any of the tribes of Israel. It is clear what they found were primitive tribesmen. Some of them were gentle and not warlike and were easily conquered by the Romans. They had no root of Hebrew in their language, period. None of them anywhere. Most of them, however, were fierce tribesmen many of whom went into battle naked, covered with mud, screaming like banshees and had no mercy for anything. Their women would come along behind them and pick whatever was worth anything off the bodies of the dead. And there are accounts that they would even eat parts of the bodies of their slain enemies. The Germanic tribes were so fierce and so primitive and so pagan that the Roman legions were constantly on battle at that frontier and never did completely conquer the Germanic tribes. The Celts, what were known as the Gauls, what were known as the Picts, most of them were conquered by the Romans. Some of them were incorporated into the Roman Empire and paid taxes to the Romans. All of this is on record. Of course, the Romans brought their religion into those regions and coupled with the pagan religions of those peoples, 
new legends and new myths, new metaphors began to evolve, and eventually, as the Roman Empire became the Catholic Church and the Roman Emperor became the Pope, the Catholic religion was introduced and mixed with many of these legends and fables and metaphors, and in many of these places strange tales and legends grew up as they struggled to interpret the new religion from the new Bible they began to create legends stories that never happened and were never recorded before that time in their history nor in the history of the Romans in their interaction with them. Now, these legends did not become prominent, and nobody paid any attention to them, and you will not find any record of them until the Normans gained power in England. When the Normans gained power in England, the secret societies began to front for the Norman cause and a whole legend was created and scriptures were found to back it up that the Anglo-Aryan race was the lost 13 tribe of Israel. None of it stands up under any scrutiny either historically or scripturally. But I hear on the radio and I see and read in pamphlets and books all of the bent and warped scriptures and references and the out and out lies of the history that try to convince people to back this up because this will carry you into the new world order and whether you realize it or not any of you who cling to this and promote it are promoting the new world order you are helping to destroy the United States of America the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and freedom for all of us. And you had better get your head on straight and quit listening to those who are misleading you. It is a heady wine to think that you are somehow better than others, that you are a master race destined to rule the world, and that when Christ comes, you will be the chosen people and everyone else will bow to you. It is a lie, ladies and gentlemen, and when you front those ideas and when you espouse those beliefs, you are in effect, if you are a Christian, calling Jesus Christ a liar. And I suggest you go back and read his words. For he never made any distinction between classes of people. He never rejected anyone, nor did he run after anyone who passed his teaching on the road and tried to force his teaching down their throat. It never happened. Never, not once. He accepted anyone who came to him, no matter their race, their color, or their creed, no matter their station in life, whether they were a prostitute or a nobleman, it made no difference to Jesus Christ and his his formula for acceptance into the kingdom of heaven was simply this whomsoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life he did not say whomsoever is a British Israelite shall have everlasting life he did not say whomsoever is black shall have everlasting life he did not say whomsoever is a Jew shall have everlasting life he did not say whomsoever is an Anglo Aryan shall have everlasting life and you had better understand that those who are manipulating you and teaching you these lies are heading you for a fall for there is no master race never was and never will be of course if you're not a Christian then this doesn't make much difference to you but it is a manipulation it comes out of the heart of the mysteries that came from ancient Babylon and were twisted on the continent and in England 
to promote a hidden agenda. And I quote, ladies and gentlemen, from the book entitled The Teachings of the Masters, written by Reverend Dr. R. Swineburn Clymer, who was the Director General of the Church of Illumination, the Supreme Grand Master of the International Confederation of Initiates of the OTO, of the Golden Dawn, of Freemasonry, of the Knights of Malta and the Knights Templar, the Supreme Grand Master of the merged occult fraternities comprising the Priesthood of Ith, the Rosicrucian Order, the Secret Schools, the Hermetic Brotherhood, Fraternitas Rosicrucius, the Temple of the Rosy Cross, the Order of the Magi, Sons of Isis and Osiris, Illuminati Americani, which translated means the American Illuminati. And this book was published by the Philosophical Publishing Company of Beverly Hall, Quakertown, Pennsylvania, in 1952. The source of this information is from the 68th Convocation of the Rose Cross Order, to which all of the high-ranking members of the various orders and fraternities of what is known by the Brotherhood as the Illuminati or the Brotherhood of Man, internationally as the Internationale, in 1916 at Beverly Hall. And I quote verbatim, and you had better listen because this is the source of your teachings. And it will be the hard core of the New World religion. It is already pervasive in the New Age movement, and it is very easily checked. I quote, the source of the mystical teachings of the New Testament could offer no other interpretation of the symbolism of the young republic than the ancient pyramid, its copestone and glory, significant of the descent of the New Jerusalem for the one side, and the eagle and the ever-repeating thirteen of Manasseh, thirteenth, or lost, torn away tribe of Israel, and the son of Joseph, the Britons, who was separated from his brethren in Egypt in the parting asunder of northern Israel from southern Judah. Now, historically, Judah was never a part of Israel, and that's why they say here, northern Israel from southern Judah, because Judah was never a part of Israel. And if they made it sound as if Judah a part of Israel separated itself from the whole, then they could be found historically incorrect, so they tell the truth. The parting asunder of northern Israel from southern Judah, never again to become part of Judah, and the first to cross Europe in the search of the legendary isles afar off, to re-establish the ancient Gentile throne of Israel, at Tava in Ireland. Now it is significant that they separate the name Israel into three syllables, is ra -el, with dashes. It stands for Isis, Ra, who is represented as Osiris, and El, El means God. The hitherto rejected reverse side of our great seal is now in full view of these United States. It is to remind the people that from the beginning they were called to a great work as offspring of a mighty Manasseh whose history began in Genesis and will culminate in America and by whose stripes the world must be healed and will be healed despite the many and inglorious betrayals of those who have set themselves up as the leaders of the peculiar people of the eagle. The legend tells us that Joseph betrayed as we have often been and cast off by his own people married the daughter of the priest of the temple of On in Egypt. Now remember if you've listened to this program you know that On is another name for the Sun, or Osiris, or the Light, or Lucifer. They're saying that Joseph, as the legend tells, and it is a legend, it is not historical fact, never was and never can be, for it is a lie. 
The legend tells us that Joseph betrayed as we often been, have been, and cast off by his own people, married the daughter of the priest of the temple of On in Egypt. Today, as an eternal symbol until the time of the placing of the copestone upon the pyramid, one pillar of that ancient temple stands in London while its mate stands in New York. It is the Phallus of Osiris, the obelisk. There is also one in the outer courtyard of the Vatican, and one stands in Dealey Plaza. One also stands on the estate grounds of the Priory de Sion, or the House of Sion in England. These are vivid and should be constant reminders to us of our unbreakable connections with ancient Egypt and with Europe and our father Joseph as an Anglo-Saxon culmination. As a result of this union and between these two pillars must all the world in biblical language pass into Ephraim or Shiloh. Professor Tutton, an eminent symbologist, understood these ancient mysteries fully and indicated this in his statement, quote, The whole Bible is written in the stars, both the law and the gospel, while esoterically the entire story of man is set forth upon the sea of Manasseh. The obverse side is Israel, under the new covenant, as the hope and outcome victory of Christianity, the two sides reflect each other and cannot be separated, unquote, and that is the meaning of the new covenant that Clinton espouses. For he also is a member. This was displayed dramatically in the photograph published worldwide where he stood in the Oval Office holding up a single red rose. Castro has been photographed holding up a single red rose as has been Gorbachev, the leader of France and the Queen of England. There is a possibility of England's betrayal and by forces within in which event America would be compelled to stand alone. This possibility, I probability, was clearly indicated in the poem ascribed to Merlin of King Arthur's court on the constellation of the thirteen stars. And we'll get into that right after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this country has been betrayed by the Tories who never wanted to separate from England in the first place. The body of the Illuminati around the world are working toward one world government and if this Anglo-Aryan faction has its way they will rule the world through a council of elders. If the Vatican has its way the Pope will sit upon the throne of the world. 